All right. Well, good morning. Good morning and welcome to worship. Welcome to Salem. It's wonderful to see you all this morning. Um, if, you're, if you're joining us online, uh, please, please go to our website at SalemOrange.com and click on Sunday services if you'd like to uh, download the lyrics for this morning's uh, worship service uh, or worship music. And you can also leave an offering there later on in the service uh, through our website and even RSVP for next Sunday's outdoor service if you want to join us live. That would be awesome. Uh, so today, as always, we will be in God's Word. Our special guest today, Pastor Dan, will be taking us through Romans 8, uh, 28, 39. So let's get our hearts and our minds ready and focused on worshiping God this morning. Let's, let's pray together. Please bow your heads. Let's, let's pray. Father, I pray that you will make your presence known to each of us this morning, Lord. Let your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Lord, help us to remove any distractions that might be keeping us from you. Lord, we repent of any pride or personal idols that have taken us away from having you in first place in our hearts. Lord, please take away any, any lukewarmness we might have as well and set us on fire for you again this morning. Father, we want to be clean vessels, bringing light into the darkness of this world. Please make us powerful instruments, powerful instruments for your glory, and help us to make a difference in this community, Lord. Uh, Father, take us deeper in our prayer lives and in intimacy with you. Help us to walk in your light and your holiness. We want to dwell in your house and gaze on your beauty, Lord. We, we want to seek your face. We want to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of our lives to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. Lord, hear our voices when we call out, O oh Lord. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We begin our service today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you Oh, we live for you Let's sing Jesus Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you, oh, we live for you. Let's sing holy. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in one.
And I will build my life upon your love. It is a firm foundation. And I will put my trust in you alone. And I will not be shaken. And I Hallelujah. Thank you for singing along. Uh, we're going we're gonna to play a song called Whom Shall I Fear Now? And this is, uh, we're going to tie a bit into Pastor's message for today on Romans 8. It has a, really, has a really famous line in the scripture, if God is for us, who can be against us? If God is for us, who can be against us? So let's reflect on this as we sing, Whom Shall I Fear? Let's sing together. You hear me when I call, you are my morning song. Though darkness fills the night, it cannot hide the light. And whom shall I fear? You crush the enemy underneath my feet. You are my sword and shield. No troubles linger still. And whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. One who reigns forever, he is a friend of mine. The God of angel armies is always by my side. My strength is in your name, for you alone can save. You will deliver me, yours is the victory. Shall I fear? And whom shall I fear? I know who goes before me. I know who stands behind. The God of angel armies is always by my side. The one who reigns forever. He is a friend of mine. I'm 
service we would normally have our meet and greet which we're not gonna do we're just gonna wave to each other this morning so wave to your neighbor if you can share God's peace with him if you, if you can and then we also have some announcements which I don't see our announcement person so I'm going to I'm gonna say them for everyone else My first announcement is to thank Joanna Bush because it was her birthday this week and she's also so Johnny on the spot. Yes, praise God for Joanna Bush. She's fantastic. Um, and uh, <laughs> that was pretty good. Um, and also she's always constantly saving me when, when papers go flying. She always finds them and puts them back where they're supposed to be in the middle of service, which is wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, so again, welcome to worship. We're so glad you've joined us today. I have just a few quick announcements. First, if you need prayer, like we all do, please email prayer at SalemOrange.com. Our prayer team would love, absolutely love to be praying for you. Um, we can even pray over the phone for, you, for those of you at home. Uh, again, if you need prayer, please email prayer at SalemOrange.com. Second, Salem is always looking for ways to help our community. If you can uh, shop for someone or run errands for someone we'd love to hear from you and, and if you need someone to shop for you or run errands for you um, please 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 contact deacons at salemorange.com again that's deacons at salemorange.com third uh, just an update uh, and this is kind of a mission update for uh, Charity on Wheels uh, Charity on Wheels for those of you who don't know is a homeless ministry that Salem supports and, and I run and it's, and it's, uh, and it's a blessing and it's a blessing to have Salem supporting us so faithfully uh, because we are transforming lives in this community, in our community right here. We're, uh, we're trying to grab people out of the darkness and bring them into the light every day. And, um, and it's working. It's working. It's a little tougher right now with COVID. Um, there's a lot more folks struggling than there were before. Um, but we just this week, we're getting it. Uh, and I just want to share this praise report with you. Just this week, we're getting um, a single mom who's a victim of domestic abuse and her three children, one of which is autistic. Um, she met her in a motel. Um, this lady is just amazing. She's, she works at an elder care facility in, in, in Fullerton. She collects cans to make extra money. She drives Uber Eats. She's just doing everything she can possibly do. And um, she just needed a hand up. Not a hand out, but a hand up. So Charity on Wheels, we were able to give that to her. So she's moving into a new place, uh, an actual apartment. Yes, praise God, um, with her children this week. Praise the Lord. So um, just that we were able to be a part of that transformation, that you were able to be a part of that. Gosh, God is good. God is good. So uh, last but not least, again, tying into that, we'd like to thank you again for continuing to tithe to Salem so that they can do these amazing things in this community right here. Um, the church is only able to function because of your, your generosity. Um, and we truly appreciate you making your tithe um, a priority. So God bless you guys. Uh, and with that, we're going to um, 
This segues nicely into uh, us collecting our gifts and our offerings. So uh, you can make an offering through our website at Salem Orange if you're at home or if you're sitting out here even, SalemOrange.com. And I would encourage you, if you haven't already, to sign up. Sign up for Simply Giving. Um, that system really makes, it makes everything really easy. It's made things um, really easy for Michelle and I uh, quite a bit to stay obedient to God through these very you know, difficult times. So um, we also want to, again, thank you for your generosity. We would, we would, again, not be able to exist without your tithes and offerings. So thank you again. So now we're going to go into a time of confession. Um, please follow along with me. Uh, this is something we would normally read back and forth, but just, just please follow along and then pray with me. Um, Lord, we come humbly before you, acknowledging our sin and seeking purification of our spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God who is faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. And we pray together. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do by my fault, by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore, I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. As we sing this next song, um, Let's take some time for personal examination. Let us, let us all go to God in prayer and repentance and humbly ask for forgiveness. I come broken to be mended. 
I come wounded to be healed. I come desperate to be rescued. I come empty to be filled. I come guilty to be pardoned by the blood of Christ the Lamb. And I'm welcomed with open arms. Praise God just as I am. Oh, praise God just as I am. I couldn't help but think as I was reflecting upon my own sin. My wife Karen and I, we live in a group of condominiums up in La Habra. And it used to be when we came out of our complex, you'd come out and you could turn right on a red light. And then some neighbor decided, let's stop that. And so now you cannot turn right on the red light. And every time I've come up there for the last probably now five years since it's gotten changed, there's a temptation to turn right on the red. And I have to be honest about that. Even this morning as I was driving out, I saw, couldn't turn. We stopped and we waited for it to change. But that's how temptation works in our lives. And as you and I have had these moments during this beautiful song to reflect upon our own sin, the good thing about reflecting upon our own sin is it reminds us that as we confess that sin, as Zachary just said, God is faithful and just. And so, as a called and servant of Christ and in his authority and by his name, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The good news is God forgives our sins as far as the east is from the west and he never remembers them anymore. I wish we could do that. It's great to be with you this morning, and what I want to share with you is from Romans chapter 8. Uh, it's marvelous when, when God intervenes in our lives, and you have to understand, I do not believe in coincidences. There is no such thing as a coincidence for me. It's God incidences. And when Pastor Roger asked if I would help out today and preach, and I looked at the lectionary for today, my favorite passage, Romans chapter 8, 28 through 39, just happened to be the epistle lesson appointed for today. And so I want to share some thoughts with that verse for you right now. And in, I'm just going to read a couple of the verses because I'm going to use them as we go through our message today. It says this, and we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Would you pray with me? Gracious Father in heaven, we thank you for this marvelous word of Scripture. Bless our time together as we focus upon that word, and then enable us, dear Lord, to live out that faith each day of our lives. Bless us now by your Holy Spirit, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. You and I know that questions are a huge part of life. We're always asking questions, and we want answers to those questions. Some questions are just simply basic by their very nature. The who, why, when, how, what questions. And those questions are really designed to give us some facts and maybe some information. Sometimes those questions can indeed be important, but let's be honest, they're not always life-changing. There are other questions that are life-changing. Questions like, which college should I attempt? Should I accept this job as I'm trying now to further my career? And I suspect that maybe, Walt, you asked Leanne uh, a very life-changing question when you said, will you marry me? And a lot of us else did that same thing. You see, those are life-changing questions, but then there are also what we would call 
purpose questions. Purpose questions like, who am I? Where am I going? What is my purpose in this world right now? And there are also then the faith questions. And Jesus asks us these faith questions when Jesus says to us, do you love me? And that question is quickly followed up by a second one in which Jesus says to us, do you trust me? All of these questions that we ask and look at are really life-changing in so many different ways. And in this short little reading in these verses from Romans chapter 8, Paul today asks six questions. And those six questions, I think, are extremely important for us to take a look at. The first question is simply this. What then shall we say to these things? Verse 31. If you have your Bibles, you can, can follow along with these questions. What things? All things. In the previous chapters in the book of, uh, of Romans, Paul talks about ho how creation and even we ourselves are groaning. We are groaning to be rid of this corrupted world in which we live. A world that is filled by sin. A world that isn't the way God intended it when he looked at it after creation and said, it's good. It's good. Our world has become marred by sin. And so Paul talks about how we groan to get rid of this sinful world and we look forward to the glory that is going to be revealed to us in the future. And that's the marvelous thing that God wants us to understand. So, when you take a look at what's going on in the future, how does Paul answer things in this world that aren't so pretty? How does Paul answer the things in this world that sometimes can be downright difficult for us to have to deal with and to, to bear? And the answer is found in verse 28. He says, And we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God and are called according to His purposes. If I ask you to raise your hands right now, I suspect a lot of us have used that verse over the years to try to bring comfort and to encourage somebody who is in the midst of a very difficult situation, maybe a crisis, maybe they're going through a personal illness, maybe they've lost a loved one. How oftentimes haven't we used that passage with them? But I suspect that oftentimes what we have failed is we've failed to remind them that it is God it's power that is able to work out things for our good. It is God who does that in our daily lives. And I think that's an important thing that we have to understand. God is the one who can make good out of bad. God is the one who can take our Good Fridays and actually turn them into Easter's for us. But what we have to understand it is God who does that and not we ourselves. That's very important for us to understand. And so sometimes when we say all things work out for good to God, we come across as saying, don't sweat it. Everything's going to be okay. And it's so easy during this time of this pandemic, this COVID-19 crisis, to use those same words somehow thinking it's going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. All things work for good, it says. But how does that really happen? How can that happen that all things work for our good? Think about it in, in this way, if you will. If we simply tell a person all things are going to be okay, we are really minimizing the circumstances for that person and what it is that has caused their pain. God is not the author of bad things. God doesn't create bad things. God can make good out of bad things. And that really is the message that we need to understand that he's there for us. The real point of this verse, 28, all things, is this. We know that God works in all things. You might underline the works in all things. That's what God does. He works in all things, and he brings them together for our own good. That's the good news. Now, I want to show you what I mean by this. I brought a few things with me this morning. To show you when you bake a cake or when you make cupcakes you need a few items and by the way to show you I even brought a spoon now if anybody would like to have one of these little items here's a spoon and you can have it 
So let's take a look at what goes into a cake. Baking soda. Anybody up for a spoon of that? I don't think so. I've got some salt, which of course goes into to baking cakes and things. I've got, now this one you might be tempted to take. This is sugar. You need sugar in a cake. So sometimes you put by themselves, this sugar will be okay. Anybody want a spoonful of flour? There's flour. I brought some vanilla. Good old shortening. Not, don't want a spoon of that. And anybody up for a raw egg? No. But think about it. All of these different ingredients, some of them on their own, not tasting very good. When you put them all together and mix them all together, this is what you get. Cupcakes. But the ingredients are not all good by themselves. When you and I go through life... And when we have one of those rough spots, and let's be honest, during this time of, of COVID, there's a lot of rough spots out there. And we don't need COVID to tell us about death. We don't need COVID to tell us about earthquakes and other things that can happen in our lives. But all of those things God works through, and here's my point. All of these things individually, most of them sometimes are not so good. There are some good ones. If you're going to add, as I said, on these cupcakes, got a few sprinkles, that, you'd eat those alone. Maybe if I was putting chocolate chips in here, you'd eat those alone. Think about it this way. In your life and in mine, we have good things and we have not so good things. We have really difficult things and sorrow. And then on the other side of that equation, we have joys in our lives. And what God does to work out things for our life is God takes the whole thing together. If we just pick out one thing and says, God works for good in this thing, and I just lost my spouse, that doesn't seem very good. You see, wait till God is through with the whole recipe in your life and in mine. See how God's hand works not on each individual event, but rather see how God works your whole life. And I suppose we could say, let's wait until God is done cooking, baking us. Because God has a purpose for you and for me in his life. That's where these all things become so important in our lives. It's important to understand that we probably aren't going to always see the goodness of God until he's done with us. And then as you begin to reflect back, you see, oh yeah, God was there with me in that. God was beside me. And so these all things are there for us. The second question is found there in the next verse. If God be for us, who can be against us? Please understand the question is not simply who can be against us. You and I can answer that question pretty easy. Pandemic, COVID, cancer, heart disease, unemployment, death. We can answer who our foes are very, very easily. We know who's against us. But this question really is, if God is for us, who can be against us? That's the difference. If God is for us. And matter of fact, some translators actually translate that as since God is for us, who can be against us? You and I need to understand that that's the powerful God that we have. An important God who watches over us and takes care of us every single day. And since God is for us, it doesn't really matter who is against us. There may be some days in your life and even in my life when I feel like everybody and the whole thing is coming down. I think especially during this, this time of this pandemic and all these lockdowns and things that we are going through. It can be overwhelming at times. But guess what? None of that is any match for God. God can see us through every single one of those situations in our lives. Even if they all come us at us at once, and sometimes that's what it's going to be like. We might feel overwhelmed, but remember, God is there with us. God doesn't want us simply to go through life surviving. God wants us to go through life abundantly because that's what He wants for us. There is an old movie entitled Bear. Anybody ever seen it? It's about a little bear cub 
that is being threatened by a mountain lion. And as you look at the situation in the movie, the mountain is there about to devour the cub. The bear cub seemingly has no hope. There's nothing left. But the bear cub decides, I'm going to try once more. And so the bear cub stands up on his hind legs and gives a loud growl. Well, if a cub could give a loud growl. And all of a sudden, you see the mountain lion running into the forest. And then the camera pans back to look at the cub. And you see the cub standing up. But then behind the cub, you see mama bear standing tall behind the bear or behind her cub. You see, God stands tall behind you and behind me. No matter what's going on in our lives, excuse me, no matter what it is we're experiencing, His shadow is cast over me every day and His shadow is cast over you every day. What shall we do then in that situation? Since God is for us, who can be against us? You know, those are four very important words. God is for us. Say them with me. God is for us. I want to challenge you. Every morning you get up, say good morning to your wife. But then, the next four words need to be, God is with us. God is with me. If we remind ourselves every day that no matter what's going on in our lives, God is with us, His protection is there for us. That's why I, I just love this, this verse. There's so much in here. Third question, he says, is in verse 32. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us, how also how will he not also freely give us all things? Think about what that really means. How far was God willing to go for you and for me? He went so far as to give his only son to die upon the cross so that your sins and mine might be forgiven. His son, he gave him up for us. That's the marvelous thing. And notice here what words show up again. All things. All things are in this verse. Did God save us so that we simply might enjoy salvation? Or did God save us so that we might experience all the other things in this life? Did Jesus go to the cross and die for us so that he could turn a deaf ear to our prayers? Did Jesus die upon the cross so that you and I might be robbed of the joy of living? And the answer is no. What does it say in John? Jesus said, I've come that they might have life and that they might have it abundantly. He comes us to bring us abundant life. He doesn't want any of us just surviving. He doesn't want any of us just getting by. He wants us to have the abundant life. And that's, that all things is there again to remind us of that. And what we need to learn is to trust God. Verse 33 has the fourth question. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. One of the fascinations I had as a child, and this is going to really date me, I guess I'm really old, was Perry Mason. He used to watch Perry Mason all the time. And I can remember that the prosecuting attorney would always be accusing the defendant, pointing the finger at him, accusing, and the accusations almost seemed to intensify as during the trial. Well, you understand, Satan does that to us every day. Satan is pointing the finger at you, and Satan pointing the finger at me and saying, you guys are sinners. Not only are you sinners, you keep on singing, sinning every single day. You don't deserve forgiveness. And sometimes I think we point the finger back at ourselves and say, I really don't deserve to be forgiven for what I've done. My friends, that's the biggest lie that Satan wants you and I to believe. We are forgiven. Why? Because Christ went to the cross for us. Christ died for us so that we might have that great gift of his love. What other opinion matters in this world other than God's opinion from his son Jesus Christ that we are forgiven? You see, that's what this means here in verse 33. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. Fifth question in verse 34. And it basically reminds us, who then is there to condemn? You have to go back to chapter, to, in the chapter 8, the first verse in this chapter, and it says, there is now therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ. No one can condemn you. No one can condemn me. Because Christ paid the price for us. And right now, the only one who could condemn us is Jesus Christ. 
But Jesus Christ is the one who gave his life for us so that we might be set free. That's the marvelous gift from God, that we have been set free. And instead of condemning this, Jesus sits right by his Father in heaven. And we have an advocate. Another way of saying is we have a defense attorney because he paid the price for you and for me. And finally, you got the last question in verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You see, my friends, St. Paul wants us to understand that there is nothing in this world that can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. That's really what this is about. All of these things, when you look at them, even in totality, do not compare against the weight of God's presence in your life and in mine. It doesn't mean they're not hard to bear. Don't misunderstand this. It is hard to bear suffering. It is hard to bear pain. Ask my wife. She'll tell you I'm a big baby when it comes to pain. I can't stand pain. But the reality is, God is greater than anything that comes into your life or into mine. And that's really what he's all about. Why? God is for us. Simple as that. God is for us. And then those final two verses. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ. Do you realize nothing can separate us from God's love in Jesus Christ? Nothing. There is nothing that can separate us. Why? Because God is for us. And God is with us. Jesus Christ came into this world to redeem us from our sins. And now we need to be reminded, especially in a time such as we're going through, that God really is for us. It doesn't matter what's going on. And God is still baking us. God is still trying to finish our lives so that we can look back. And so when you go home today, read verse 38 and 39 again. I'm going to read it to you as I close. For I am convinced that neither COVID-19, nor cancer, nor unemployment, nor earthquakes, nor any disease, nor rebellion, nor anything, is going to be able to separate us from the love of God in Jesus Christ. My friends, nothing can. Why? You say it. God is for us. Any questions? In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God that surpasses all human understanding keep our hearts and minds in Jesus Christ unto life everlasting, amen. Let us then join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed as we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, and he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he comes to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And would you pray with me? Gracious Father in heaven, we come to you this day. We hold up to you so many people who are sick. We hold up to so many people in need of your healing power. And we pray that you would reach down and touch them. You know who they are. And we can think of them in our own minds right now. And you can read our minds and knowing who needs that power of your healing power. And so be with those people. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would be with our nation during this time. We'd be with the world. And if it be your will, Heavenly Father, that you would help to bring this COVID virus to an end. And we ask, Heavenly Father, for your guidance and your protection for so many people. Be with those who are unemployed. Be with those who are looking for work. And be with us, dear Lord, that we might never forget you are with us every moment of every day. All this we pray in the name of Jesus, who's taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and abide with you all. Amen. Immediately after the sending song, 
if you kids would like to come up and get one of my cupcakes, I don't need to take them home, okay? So come on up. I'll be up here. I've got gloves, and you can have the cupcakes. God bless you. I just want to thank Pastor Dan for, for joining us today. What a wonderful message and what a wonderful man. We praise God for him. Praise the Lord. Um, let's go out singing with joy, uh, with confidence that uh, if he is for us, who can be against us? Amen. He is on our side. Let's, let's sing together. <laughs> Everyone around the world hear the joyful sound or see the heavens open up, hear the music coming down. Nothing's going to separate us from the Father's love. And I can't help but celebrate because we're not alone. God is on our side. Who can be against us? God is on our side. We won't be afraid though the mountains may fall and the sky will crumble there ain't nothing gonna stand in our way come on down to the riverside wash it all away we'll leave behind your troubled mind for an uncloudy day nothing's gonna separate us from the father's love Cause we're not alone if God is on our side Who can be against us if God is on our side We won't be afraid Though the mountains may fall and the sky will crumble There ain't nothing gonna stand in our way We go heaven, takes the bridge can be against us if God is on our side we won't be afraid though the mountains may fall and the sky will crumble there ain't nothing gonna stand in our way God is on our side we can be against us if God is on our side we won't be afraid though the mountains and the sky will crumble There ain't nothing gonna stand in our way No, there ain't nothing gonna stand in our way There ain't nothing gonna stand in our way Hallelujah. Oh, God bless you guys. Go out filled with this peace. And again, uh, Pastor Dan says that he has cupcakes for kids if you want to come up. Uh, he's got gloves and a mask and all set. I'm sorry? Kids at heart. Even kids at heart, he says. <laughs> I only have enough cupcakes for all of you. God bless you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful week. We'll see you next Sunday.